Hi, my name is Kelton Madden. I'm an undergraduate junior studying physics at the University of Pennsylvania. And today we're going to be talking about topological quantum computation and more specifically non-abelian anions. Now before defining what a non-abelian anion is, let us talk about the history and motivation for topological quantum computers. They were first proposed in a seminal work by Kateyev in 1997 where a non-local encoding of qubit information could be achieved using anions and that manipulations or gates on those qubit states could be achieved by braiding or moving those anions around each other. Now this non-locality is the key difference between quantum computational devices and traditional architectures that use, for example, superconductivity or phase. This can be seen in the statement by Dyack in 2005 that for some quantum gates, Topologically, there will be an error percentage per gate of as low as 10 to the negative 30, which vastly exceeds the requirements set by NIL in 1998, and also dwarfs competing architectures. Another reason to use such a system is that some algorithms are topological in nature and thus suited to topological quantum computation, such as solving the Jones polynomial. Also, the breakthroughs in theoretical experimental physics along the way will be vastly worth it in terms of our discoveries of new phases of matter and things of that nature. It has long been known that bosons and fermions have particular exchange statistics for identical particles. For example, bosons do not pick up a phase factor when exchanged, and fermions pick up a phase factor of negative one due to the Pauli exclusion principle. However, in 1977, Lenas and Mirheim proposed that there was a continuum in two dimensions where a new type of particle could pick up a phase that really had no constraint. And for that reason, it was called an anion by Frank Wilczek in 1982. As mentioned before, gate operations upon the system will be created using braids, which can be seen in the diagram on the right of the screen. For example, a sigma-1 operation is a unitary operation that rotates particle 1 to the position of particle 2 and particle 2 to the position of particle 1. And this is also the same with sigma-2 except now for particle 2 and 3. The distinction that is to be made between abelian and non-abelian anions is that non-abelian anions do not have these braids commute. So this can be seen in the second part of the diagram where a sigma-2 operation and then a sigma-1 operation does not equal a sigma-1 operation and then a sigma-2 operation. These non-abelian statistics are inherently topological and hence the name topological quantum computation because the actual path of the particles does not strictly matter as long as it is done adiabatically. For example, there can be wiggles in the movement around each other or perturbations, but this will not affect the overall effect of the braid. And this can be related to the aronov bohm effect where the actual movement of the particle around a solenoid is not what is important. It is the final path or amount of looping around a solenoid that will affect the phase in the end. And so the, the change that happens between non-abelian anions when braided is quite complex, but related to the Berry phase and that aforementioned adiabatic transformation and Chern-Simons field theory. Now, before delving into the theoretical and experimental implementations of such a system, we must first go all the way back to 1879 and the Hall effect discovered by Edwin Hall. So the Hall effect is when you have some current going through some conducting material and a magnetic field perpendicular to that current, then it was discovered you will have a voltage difference across that material that is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field. And this is usually measured by the Hall conductance across that material. So this was quite revolutionary in its day. And it turns out there's actually a quantum analog that is present in 2D systems. So you would expect classically electrons to rotate at the cyclotron frequency in a 2D system due to the Lorentz force. However, there is also an emergent phenomenon called Landau levels that are discrete, highly degenerate energy levels that emerge in this 2D quantum Hall system. And these Landau levels 
are actually related to the quantum Hall conductance as certain levels, depending on how much they are filled, will have different statistics in terms of the charge of the particles that are present in that level. So for example, if the first ground state degenerate Landau level is completely full, then we will have an integer quantum Hall effect with a charge E particles with charge E. However, if the first level is only partially full, now you will have some emergent particles that may have charge of, for example, E over four, which is seen in the more read state, the sort of prototypical non-abelian anion state. Now these quantized Hall conductances have been seen in many materials, including gallium arsenide and graphene, and it has been shown that, that the filling factor or nu in that equation in the top right actually corresponds to a particular value that for a given Landau level filled state. So the five halves state is the one that corresponds to the more read state. Obviously then the detection and measurement of these non-abelian states is of the utmost importance for the continuation of topological quantum computation. And so, for example, we have in 2013, will it at all put forward evidence for non-abelian anions at nu equals five halves using an inferometry experiment where they saw resistance coupled to magnetic field in a manner that was strictly non-abelian and in terms of an even odd effect that was not present in their abelian controls. But Kayerlink a year later suggested that this could actually be explained in terms of Coulomb effects rather than the even odd effect. And so that result is still up in the air. However, there has been a great deal of progress experimentally and theoretically for implementations of non-abelian anions. And specifically on this slide, we'll focus on Majoran or Ising anions, which are sort of the, the most basic state and they're related to the five halves state. So Implementations include the more read state, a spinless P-wave superconducting wire, which is seen in this diagram by Alice, where you have a wire with Myron and zero modes on the end that are then exchanged using another wire. P plus IP superconductors, topological insulators plus superconductors, and then ultra cold atoms in optical lattices. And you can see the uh, fusion statistics on the bottom left if you're interested there we're not going to focus on that as of now now you can also look to the bottom right for the way in which hy hypothetically we use um anti anti dots to both hold the non-abelian anions in place and move them around and braid them so instead of those Majorana and ising anions Instead, we will focus on the golden standard of non-abelian anions, which are called Fibonacci anions. And so these were first proposed by Reed and Reazi in 1999. And they are expected to exist at the new equals 12 fifths and possibly 13 fifths state. The distinction they have is they actually do have the ability to perform universal computation and braid to form a universal gate set, contrasted with the Ising model, which is actually closed. So, and they also have a, an advantage in terms of the, the number that's needed, which can be seen in this little statement that a 128-bit number can be factored using Shor's algorithm with 10 to the third Fibonacci anions versus 10 to the ninth Ising anions by Barbaran in 2010. And then, so the proposed implementations of these are also even even harder as, first of all, much less is known about the 12 fifths and 13 fifths state than the five halves. And um, these, these states have triplets of, which can be, they're, they're three, they're three particles together that form this sort of triplet structure. Um, and so possible Im implementations in state of the art or it would be the use of those Reed Reazi states. And then this work by Mong et al on sort of on using a using superconducting islands on top of Hall liquids so that you could have these islands which have uh, Cooper pair charge of 2E 
However, then you actually model those the that pair as three particles that have charge two thirds, so that in the end the charge is actually the same. And then somehow you can with that that model and those islands on top of the Hall liquid actually have that Z3 pair fermion relationship, which can be shown in this diagram in the bottom right where you have these sort of five halves and 13 halves analogs using superconducting islands. So now we will go into the mechanics of the Fibonacci anions. You can see the in the top left the one relation between the two where the, the non-trivial state tau contrasted with the vacuum, which is represented as a one. Um, tau fused with tau is has the possibility of being one or tau and every other state fused with the vacuum is the itself the vacuum can be treated as the sort of trivial state so these we will then move to um, the diagram on the top right which in which we can see the sort of three possible states that can be formed using um, three anions and so the circles represent the orders in which with, in which they will be fused the inner circle will be fused before the outer circle and then the figure that is right next to the the ellipse i guess will um be is the the quantum number associated with that fusion or that total group of particles so the zero state you have and then you can see these tree diagrams on the far right where it's the zero state you have these two taus which fuse to become a one and then fuse with another tau one fused with tau becomes a tau you also have the state where two taus become a tau and then fuse with tau and become a tau and then so those are represented as our standard qubits zero and one and then you have the so-called non non-computational state which is which ends up being one which is not is not allowed and is and in general these the states are initialized so that there is no amplitude of the end state in the initialization of the states or hopefully in the readout and any any amount that is transformed somehow into an end state is called leakage error um, so this the actual braiding and rotations that happen are made up of F and R transformations. F is changing the order in which things get fused and R is the swapping, which is a unitary swap. And you can just see, so for example, the swap of one and two, sigma one, two can be calculated to and represented as that matrix. And the, the bottom right term is usually not included as that's part of the non-computational state. And then you also have the um, sigma two, matrix which now actually has some fusion it actually has some f contributions as well where the first state is purely just a r rotation the sigma 2 state has a multiplication of r's and f's as it's not as trivial as the one state so these anions are called fibonacci because the number of possible fusion outcomes grows accordingly to the fibonacci sequence as more anions are added and they have a quantum dimension of the golden ratio and Simula in 2018 did a very in-depth simulation using MATLAB and just general theoretical briefing on how, for example, a the AGL algorithm, which cal calculates the Jones polynomial of some knot, um, would look in terms of braiding. So here you can see that. And this has a leakage error, error of 3.6 times 10 to the negative 6. In terms of closing remarks and outlook for the future, um, this is a very promising field in terms of materials science, theoretical physics, and the theory, the, the actual mathematical theory behind braiding and things of that sort. Um, the it seems more and more of these topological algorithms will be developed. Obviously, the de detection and manipulation of states is important, and at the end of the day, this is very aesthetic, especially if you're a topologist or a sailor and you like knots. And here you can see the C knot gate at the bottom. Finally, here is a list of all the sources that were incorporated in this presentation. Specifically, the NIAC 2008 review is immense and contains so much um, beautiful detail on the topic. So that was very useful.
um, besides that, thank you for watching and enjoy.